In this video, I will present to you the solution for wanting to mount a mobile antenna, such as this, or even a larger one, when you do not have a good ground plane to mount said antenna on. A ground plane, for those of you not familiar with the term, is not an airplane that is parked on the ground. Instead, a ground plane in very simple terms is a bunch of conductive material, such as steel or aluminum, below your antenna. And I mean right below your antenna. This ground plane is required for certain types of antennas, such as mobile antennas. And it helps to bounce all of the RF electricities up into the sky so that they can find their way to your friend's radio when he is trying to listen to whatever it is you're saying on your radio. Usually, the ground plane is simply the metal of your car that your antenna is mounted on. And contrary to what many of the online experts have to say, the ground plane does not have to be physically connected to your antenna. For example, if using a magnetic mount antenna, the RF electricities will easily ooze right through the rubber coating and the paint on the car, and the antenna will couple with the metal to make baby RF electricities, also known as the ground plane. Or if you're using a mobile antenna in the house, a simple cookie sheet will also make a suitable ground plane, as long as about three and a half inches or more of the metal is extending outward around the antenna. Thusly. That would be three and a half inches for a GMRS radio. If you are using a CB antenna, because the frequencies are much lower than GMRS, you would need a much larger ground plane. But because nobody uses CBs anymore, nobody cares about that. But what if you desire to mount your mobile antenna on a corner of your vehicle with no metal or ground plane directly below it? Or what if your goal in life is to mount your GMRS antenna on the fiberglass roof of your Jeep or motorhome? Or maybe you want to use a mobile antenna with a base station for your house, nailed to a 2x4 in the attic, with no ground plane below it. My friend, in situations like these where there is no adequate ground plane, you will likely get a very high SWR, and the antenna would not perform to its full potential, sadly resulting in fewer FARs. And that is where this can come in very handy. A ground plane kit. This one is from Nagoya, and Nagoya did not send this to me. I paid full price for this with the monies collected from my supporting YouTube channel members. Those are the people that have the fancy stars and icons next to their names when they leave comments, so they stand out above all the other schlubs and nobodies that leave comments and they achieved their higher status in life by clicking the join button or link below. In a ground plane kit, such as in this Nagoya ground plane kit, you will find a bracket, some mounting clamps for the bracket, an NMO mount, which is removable with four curious holes drilled in it, you will find four 11 and a half inch long radials and four 10 and a half inch long extensions. These extensions lengthen the radials. They attach on to the end thusly. And these would be for use in much lower frequencies, such as CB radio. So you don't really need these for GMRS. As previously mentioned, the radials are 11 and a half inches long. But the radial in a ground plane only has to be one quarter of the wavelength of the frequencies that you are transmitting on. And for the GMRS range, that would be about three and a half inches or so from each side of the antenna. But longer, as with everything in life, is okay. The radials simply and easily screw in to the base of the ground plane. I'm not gonna screw them all in because I'll be poking myself in the eye. But you would put all four in and they would be pointing out in all directions. And as you can see, the radials stick out flat. But legend has it that if you were to angle the radials downward by bending them slightly to an angle of about 40 degrees, 42 degrees to be exact, that might improve the functionality of the ground plane. But depending on how and where you have it mounted, 
bending the radials in a downward position may not be possible, but flat works good enough in most cases. I almost forgot. It also comes with this small Allen key and some tiny little screw-in thingies. Those are for attaching the previously mentioned extensions. You would stick the extension in the hole and then use one of these to screw in and tighten it down. But as previously mentioned in the GMRS world, you don't need those extensions. This kit was made to be mounted on a mast. You can then use the clamps to clamp the bracket to the mast securely, but you can easily remove the mount from the bracket. You can then mount just the stud, stud, without the bracket, on something like the flat fiberglass roof of your Jeep or your motorhome, if you're willing to drill a hole big enough through the roof to accommodate the stud. Or you could leave it all on the bracket and easily mount it on a two by four in your attic or just nail it to the side of your house. The only limit to how or where you mount it is your imagination. But the burning question is, does this thing really work? Can these tiny little wires really replace something as substantial as a cookie sheet? So to answer that question, I set up my Midland Ghost antenna with no ground plane on a plastic tripod and I then measured the SWR using my rig expert antenna analyzer that I got from buy2wayradios.com and as you can see with no ground plane I got an SWR reading of 4.4 to 1 and ladies and gentlemen that is not a good SWR reading this means that if I was using a radio that outputs 50 watts only 36 watts would actually be able to squirt out of the antenna. All of those other watts would be oozing back down into the radio, causing excessive heat in the guts of the radio and potentially causing damage to those guts because guts and heat are not a good combination. I then added the ground plane radials to the mount, which is what forms the ground plane for the antenna. And I measured the SWR again, and this time I got a reading of 1.94 to 1. This means that if I was transmitting at 50 watts, 45 of those watts would be able to squirt out of the antenna. And not only does that mean more RF electricity's squirting into the air where you want them to be, but that also means far less electricity's oozing back down into the guts of the radio, which, as previously mentioned, is never a good thing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to point out that an SWR of 1.94 to 1 is not a perfect SWR measurement. However, it is far better than the 4.4 to 1 SWR that we saw with no ground plane. And a 1.94 to 1 SWR is perfectly acceptable for any normal person. Don't let any experts try to tell you otherwise. And as previously mentioned, you might even be able to improve on this SWR by bending the radials downward at an angle of up to 42 degrees. So as you just witnessed with your very own skull-mounted ocular fluid sacs, if you are struggling to get a good ground plane, the use of an inexpensive ground plane kit, such as this from Nagoya or any other company, could drastically improve your life and the SWR of your antenna.